Okay, welcome to the 39th lecture in the Otara University of Commerce English Lecture Series. It is a great pleasure to welcome today Professor Hideo Nakamura. He's a law professor here at OUC and the best dressed professor on campus. I hope to be like him when I grow up someday. Uh, his speech today is Commercial Dispute Resolution. Okay, please welcome Professor Hideo Nakamura. Thanks very much, Professor Pan, for inviting me to this class. I was walking down the corridor last year sometime, and I met um, Professor Clanky. He was with all smiles. And he commented on my bow tie. I think I was wearing a bow tie on that day. And he mentioned that I was wearing a nice bow tie. And I said, thank you. And that was actually an introductory technique to get me into a conversation. So he kept on speaking on sort of general things. And finally, he mentioned that he was having this lecture series and asked me whether I was interested in giving a lecture. There was no way I could deny that. Uh, he got me by that time, so I said, I'm more than willing to do that. And that's, that's why I'm here today. But I'm, I'm uh, most pleased to be able to talk to you on a very difficult uh, subject today, but I, I'll try to speak it um, as, as easy as you may understand. Okay, but before we um, start on the subject of commercial dispute resolution, I would like you, I'd like to ask a question to you. Suppose we have, <clears throat> we have 40 people in this room, the 40 people in this room, and we are discussing what we're going to have for lunch. Some people said uh, Chinese noodle. Adat said curry and rice. There was no agreement. So we decided to take a vote, show of hands. Now, first proposal was, would you like to have Chinese noodle this after, for this lunch? Now, Twenty people voted yes for the proposal. Twenty people said no to Chinese noodle for this lunch. My question to you is this. Was the proposal agreed? In other words, was the resolution carried? Carried means voted in favor, accepted, yes. The proposal for the Chinese noodle lunch was approved, agreed to was not carried, resolution was not carried. In other words, it was no. Three, because there are 20 people voted yes, and 20 people voted no, there is no decision. OK. You must raise your hand for one of any three of these things when I ask you to raise your hand. Please do raise your hand to, to any of them. OK. How many of you, you think that the resolution was carried? It was agreed? 
Raise your hand, please. One, two. Okay. More? Two. So two people thought proposal for Chinese noodle lunch was agreed. Now, how many think it was not carried? It was rejected. Raise your hand, please. None. How many of you think that there was no decision? Raise your hand. OK. Um, let's see if, um, <laughs> This is very interesting. What do you think, Professor Kranke? What's your answer? My answer? No decision. No decision. And your answer? Carried. Carried. If a proposal was put to people for voting, and 20 people agree, and 20 people did not agree, the right answer is yes. Oops. It was not carried. It was not agreed. OK. The reason for this is the rule is majority. Majority meaning tasukets. OK. Majority means you have to get a vote more than the other. Difference, there has to be a difference of at least one. If there are 21 votes for yes and 20 votes for no, resolution is agreed, carried, accepted. If 20 said yes and 20 said no, there is no majority. There is no majority. Therefore, if there is no majority, there is no agreement. Therefore, it is rejected. That's the right answer. But I'm, I'm a bit surprised that nobody actually voted for two. That, I think, is a good example of difference of um, philosophy, difference of customs, difference of thinking between different people. When democracy was imported, uh, brought into Japan, people also introduced this idea of majority voting. But apparently, it has not been correctly understood so people think there is no decision. Now, there, there is no such thing as no decision. There has to be a decision either yes or no. There's nothing between when you make a decision. OK. <coughs> Having said that, we will now look at the resolution of international commercial disputes. Resolution uh, means solving problems. So resolution of international commercial of dispute. Okay. Dispute means difference of opinion. I think this, you think that. But we, 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 we have different views. That is a dispute. So international commercial dispute resolution is when someone in Japan, for example, um, has business with someone in a foreign country, and they come to disagreement. Their opinions differ on something. That is the, the dispute. Let's suppose um, we, are, we are importers of fruits. OK? We're importers of fruits. And we have agreed to buy bananas from, does Ghana grow banana? Yeah. OK. <laughs> <laughs> so we are importing bananas from Ghana. There is one company in Ghana called the Farouk Company, who um, exports bananas to Japan. 
Okay, that is the contract agreement. That is the business deal that we have with the Farouk and company. We have ordered uh, 10 tons of bananas. 10 tons of bananas from Ghana. And we have paid the price. We have paid the money. Bananas arrived at Otaru port and bananas were brought, carried to this campus. We opened the boxes. Bananas were bad. Oh. <laughs> bananas were bad. We think, we think when Farouk and company, so it is, <laughs> Farouk and company <laughs> exported bananas, bananas were already bad. They exported bad bananas. So we sent a message by email to Farouk and company saying, your bananas were bad. Please return my money. Or we could say, please replace these bananas. Replace meaning giving something new in place of old thing. I will return these bananas to you. Give, me, give us 10 tons of new good bananas. If Farouk and company is a very honest company, perhaps they will return money or maybe give us new bananas. That's a happy ending. But often in international transactions, sellers will say, no, 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 bananas are all perfectly good. We have checked each and every banana. It was shining, it was green, it was perfect. That's what usually they say. And we say, no, 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 look at these um, bananas. It's black and soft and mushy and everything else. They continue to say no. We continue to say replace. We continue to say return my money. Now, if this happened in Japan, suppose we buy bananas from Okinawa, somebody in Okinawa, and bananas sent to us from Okinawa were bad. I think the seller in Okinawa will agree to compensate us, agree to return our money, maybe change the product. Why? If, if an exporter, a seller in Okinawa neglected, rejected, did not replace the goods, bananas, there will be a very bad reputation. People will say, that company in Okinawa is a bad company. And if there's a rumor going all over Japan saying company, Okinawa Banana X uh, sales company is a bad company, then he will not be able to continue his business. He's afraid of, he's afraid of um, being looked at as nasty seller. So he will be very honest and try to um, solve the problem and cooperate with us so that we can both agree to the final answer. Ghana is a faraway country. It's nearly at the other side of uh, the earth. I have actually traveled very near to Ghana uh, when I was working for a company. I had to fly to London first, 13 hours, and then rest in London for a few hours and took another flight down to Nigeria, which is a few countries next to Ghana. And it was about eight hours. So altogether, it was more than 24 hours to fly from here. How many hours does it take now from Ghana yeah, to Japan? 17 hours. 17 hours. So you're, most of the day you're on the, on the airplane anyway. That means 
if the company in Ghana, Farouk and Company, <laughs> try to be dishonest and, and would not listen to what we say, it is very difficult for us to travel to Ghana and, and negotiate a resolution. Negotiate means talk about resolution. So, if the parties, the people are very far away, usually the pro it is more difficult to, to solve problems. And that is what usually happens in international transactions. Transaction means um, commercial activities. If you look at the handout today, in one, one, it says there is no pressing reason to solve. Pressing reason meaning I have to solve this problem, otherwise I'll be, I'll be a loser. But there is no reason to, to, to um, hurry. Because Ghana, Farouk and company in Ghana has no money. Remember, we have paid the money. It doesn't really matter what the people in Japan say. I don't care, we don't care. Farouk and company is rich with, with money. So there is no reason that they have to worry about solving the problem. Two, it says the more time it passes, the less motivated the claiming party becomes. That means we have talked to Farouk company for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, two months, three months, no answer, no progress, no nothing. We get tired. We would rather do business in Japan and make more money than talking to Farouk and company who has no interest in cooperating with us. So, it's, it's, there is no reason for them to solve the problem and if we get tired. Look at one three. It says, where can I litigate? Do you know the word litigate? Litigate is to take the matter to the court. Saibansho. Litigate means saibansho. Okay? If there's a dispute between us and the company in Okinawa, we can go to a Japanese court, maybe Sapporo District Court, Sapporo Saibansho, maybe Naha Saibansho, but we can go to a court and court will help us to solve the problem. Now, if we have a dispute, problem with a Ghana, Ghanaian company, where do you go? Do you go to Accra? Accra is a city in Ghana. Or do you go to Sapporo Court? Now, we don't know where is the right place to go. So, Domestic, national disputes. In national disputes, you know where to go. You can go to a local court and ask, for, ask the judges to make decision. International disputes, you don't know where to go. One four. Can I enforce the foreign judgment? Now, there are many difficult words here. Enforce means, um, suppose we went to the right court, wherever it is, and one, the judge said in the judgment, he said, we order Farouk and company to pay one million yen to Otaru company. It's a judgment handed down by the court. And we have this judgment. Now, how do we check? Um, where do we take this piece of paper and get the money? Okay. 
if this were in Japan, and I, I, we win in Sapporo District Court, Sapporo Chibo Saiban Show, and we get judgment, hanketsu, and we win. We take this judgment to another court somewhere in Japan and actually ask the, the court to order the seller to pay the money. So that is called enforcement. Kyosei shikko. You can change, you can actually force the other side to follow, obey the judgment. But in, in, in international disputes, it's very difficult how you can actually enforce your judgment is another problem. So there is a problem in the beginning that they're not corporate, corporate, cooperative with me. There is a problem that it takes money, it takes time, it takes all those things to even speak to the other party and, and negotiate with it. We don't know which one, which is the right place to take this uh, matter, which is the right court. Even if we won, we don't know where to take this uh, judgment for enforcement. There are many, many, many problems that you do not expect if you did the same thing in Japan, within the same country. Now, in two, it says legal actions. Legal actions mean social. And I, have, I will introduce just a few difficulties in, in um, initiating legal actions. I'll tell you a case. Somebody traveled to Malaysia. This was a real case. So somebody traveled to Malaysia. And he booked a flight from Kuala Lumpur, which is the capital of Malaysia, to a local city within Malaysia. That's all Malaysia. And the airplane was hijacked. Hijacked meaning not torarita. Airplane was hijacked. And finally it fell. And he was killed. So his wife and children who are in Nagoya, in Japan, took the case to Nagoya Saiban Show, saying Malaysian Airlines is wrong, is a bad company. Malaysian Airlines must compensate us because uh, my husband has been killed by the accident. Malaysian Airlines is, is responsible. Now, accident took place in Malaysia during the flight between Kuala Lumpur and Penang. These are two local cities in Malaysia. Malaysian Airlines said, we have nothing to do with you in Japan because the accident took place in, in Malaysia. The ticket was sold in Malaysia. He traveled in Mar Malaysia. We are a Malaysian company based in Malaysia. What about Japan? Why do I have to answer your, your, your request in Japanese court? Now, at the time, there was no law law meaning horitsu in, in, Jap in Japan, saying whether Japanese cyber court can decide this problem or not. So they, always, they, they, they took the matter all, all the way up to the Supreme Court, Saiko Saiban Show, finally, simply to decide whether a Japanese court has power to deal with this problem. Not 
not the contents of the case, but just into entrance whether Japanese court can entertain this dispute or not. That was the question which went up to the Supreme Court over many years. Supreme Court said, yes, we have a difficulty here. Because the law, there is no law to give the answer to this question on whether we can deal with this problem in Japan or not. But finally, Supreme Court thought very sympathetic to the wife and children, sympathetic, um, because it was very sad for this wife to lose her husband and children to lose their father. So the court said, we have, we have a right to solve this problem within Japan. As soon as the court said they have the power, Malaysian Airlines agreed to pay money, compensate the family. But that, this was uh, in um, 1981 or so. But the problem I'm, I'm, I'm describing here is, is whether you, Japanese court can deal with this problem or not seems to be a simple problem. But there is no answer. Well, there was no answer. The law was enacted, and it has come into force last April. So we, have, we do have now law to decide, but up until April, we had no answer. That is um, two bracket three. Uh, I have uh, put down the name of the case, Malaysian Airlines case. Now, I think you now see that there is a there's a big big problem. Uh, in dealing with uh, foreign uh, international commercial disputes. And it is not only because, uh, between Ghana and Japan, not only between China and Japan, not only between America and Europe. It's, it's all over the world. It's very difficult. And court system, financial system, is not the best way to deal with this problem because of its legal nature. It is very difficult. So, in the International Commercial Dispute Resolution, people have developed different ways. If you turn over your handout, number three, Yeah, the other side. Okay. There is a phrase called ADR. ADR, which stands for Alternative Dispute Resolution. Alternative, uh, alternative means if this is not available, then what is, the, what is something else that is available? Ah. Are we out? Yeah. Or maybe people can share with your, with your friends. Okay. Alternative. Suppose you have, you, you commute from Sapporo. And JR is on strike. JR doesn't run today. What do you do? You take a bus. Okay. That is an alternative means, alternative way to come to school. If one is not available, then you take the other. That is alternative. The alternative dispute resolution is an alternative for court resolution, court litigation. Instead of going to law courts, 
for, for resolution, people have developed better way to solve problems. What are they? I have listed about um, seven or eight ADR techniques there. That is three, two, where it says what techniques are available. One is a negotiation between the parties and the advisors. Parties meaning uh, people who are involved in, in the dispute. So we talk, we try to talk each, with each other. The advisors, like lawyers, accountants, or um, engineers. And usually, people at the top, top management, talk each other with lawyers and try to solve the problem because, I, as I have explained, it takes time, it takes money, and it takes everything else to solve the problem. So we try to talk and talk out the issues, problem. The second and third, and maybe the fourth one, mediation, conciliation, mini trials are very um, highly technical um, ways. But again, mediation, for example, is this. Now, I have a dispute with uh, Farouk and company. I say this, and Farouk company says that. Mediation is where we, we get together and then ask someone to come into this room and listen to us. And I say this, and he says this, and she decides. But she's not a judge. So her opinion is a private suggestion. But if we both believe that she's a good person who knows the business, her answer will be a satisfactory resolution. So mediation is, is not legally um, very powerful, but still we agree to, be, to, to listen to what the mediating person says. That's mediation. Conciliation is more or less the same thing. If you go down the list, there is baseball or last of arbitration. Now, this is an interesting thing. Baseball arbitration is like, let's talk and solve the problem. <laughs> That's arbitration. Baseball arbitration is, is frequently done in America, where they have disputes about sport athletics, sports um, people. What they do, for example, if, if there is a dispute as to um, who can get this uh, Suppose two teams are fighting for da gain, uh, getting, obtaining Dalvish, okay? And they have got into a dispute. Baseball arbitration is this. You write the answer. One party, one person writes the answer. We want uh, Dalvish for or um, Ichiokuen, write down the answer. Their, their price. And the other party says Ichiokuen, ni mai. And then they put the votes into a box. And the person in the middle has certain idea. Darvish is like um, Ichiokuen, ni mai. Okay? So who wins? One who has put in a reasonable answer, 
1億円、maybe 1億2000万、depending on the rules. But when, if somebody said 5000万円、he loses because he said he, his, his, his suggestion is too low. If somebody said 3億円、he loses because he goes far beyond a reasonable answer. So baseball arbitration is like that where reasonable people, reasonable person wins. So people try to be reasonable, try not to be unreasonable. There is a tunnel between France and the UK in Europe called the um, Channel Tunnel. From Paris to Brussels in Belgium and Brussels on to London. And train goes a long tunnel called Channel Tunnel. Construction of Channel Tunnel was a million dollar project. Very, very expensive project. And there were hundreds of contracts Hundreds of building companies and, and, and all these、uh, electrical appliances and, and trains and rail and everything else. If anything goes wrong in a channel tunnel project and people went to court, cyber shop, there will be millions of litigations, court activities, which would delay the project. The project had to be completed in three or four years. So they didn't want to allow people to go to court directly. So they had about four layers of problem solving mechanism. One of them is, as I said in the note, expert. You have to go to expert for determination, you have to go to this for determination. And you have to go to that for the damage before you can go to court. By doing so, you can actually reduce the possibility of people going to litigation. So, expert determination was very successful. So, we have court proceedings on one hand, which is a very formal proceeding, formal system, where you have to, have, you have to、um, listen to,、uh, you have to satisfy very difficult rules, requirements, and so on. On the other hand, you have ADR, alternative dispute resolution, which is alternative to court proceedings. But sometimes ADR doesn't work perfectly. Because court proceedings, you have the court government, the nation behind it. ADR, there's no, nothing behind the system. So, what you want to have is something in between, in the middle. And that is called arbitration. In four, I put set the、um, arbitration. Arbitration is a dispute resolution system which is not as formal as court proceedings, but it is not as informal as ADR. It is somewhere in between. 
I should just uh, introduce a few features, good and bad features, or advantages and disadvantages of the system. If you could look at 4.2, these are advantages of arbitration. Arbitration, you don't worry about which place, which court you go. You agree. You agree to have your arbitration somewhere in advance, first when you enter into a transaction. In arbitration, you have flexible rule. Flexible means not very formal. Three, it says resolution by aequo et bono. Aequo et bono means that is not law, but it's common sense. It is good sense of arbitrating people. It is possible to decide things aiku et bono. That is one of the advantages of arbitration. In court proceedings, judges will have to follow the law strictly. Judges cannot go away from the law. They are bound by Nihon no Kenpo, constitution, to apply law only. But arbitration, it doesn't have to be so. It also sets specialists on the issues. Now, judges do not know what's wrong with the banana export agreement. Judges know nothing about power generating plant. Judges know nothing about digging tunnels across Europe and the UK. Judges do know about law, but they know they have very little knowledge on the worldly things. But in arbitration you can choose specialists. Specialists about um, fruits specialists about digging tunnels. So you get better answer. Um, there are a few other advantages in arbitration. If you look at number three, I have listed shortcomings of arbitration. Arbitration is not as formal as court proceedings. So sometimes there is an uncertainty In court litigations, you can refer to law, code, book, and think about what the judge will say. But sometimes in arbitrations, um, there may be certain uncertainty. Arbitrators are not judges. They are not um, uh, specially trained for legal disputes. So there may be some um, problem in the quality of uh, decision-making process. And there are a few other shortcomings. But on the, other, uh, on the whole, I have I have worked for a trading half company for 29 years before I became a professor. And I have um, looked at international transactions for about 25 years. I have looked at about 10,000 documents dealing with international transactions. And out of 10,000 documents, about 80% 80, 8, 0. 80% 80 of documents actually called for arbitration as dispute resolution, rather than going to court. So arbitration is very, very, very widely used by commercial people as effective 
way of uh, solving the problems. Now, if you graduate from this university and start working for international companies or companies where you deal with uh, foreign countries, uh, companies, you will see arbitration, word arbitration uh, in your document. Um, I, 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 um, I'm afraid that talk today maybe was um, a bit too difficult because it has involved many legal jargons, legal terms. But um, uh, what one thing I would like you to take home is there is such a thing as arbitration, there is such a thing as ADR. These are very, very important piece of knowledge for you. Court litigation, ADR, and arbitration in the middle. Okay, thank you very much.